There you are, Claire. You should be able to take it away. Right. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Super. Okay, well, thanks for that. That's super, Red. Um, Red, oh, I'm looking... Pardon me. One, one thing, um, Claire, before we get started. Somehow yep. I completely forgot to introduce you. So let me do that <laughs> first. Uh, that's really important. So people know all about um, you. So I'll just uh, let everybody know who you are. So Claire Wood is a practicing clinical midwife in the UK who has worked the majority of her 35 years on a consultant led labor ward. Claire became increasingly concerned for healthcare workers' welfare in the workplace and commenced as part of her PhD in Insider Participatory Action Research Study in 2018. The qualitative study aimed to explore how clinical and non-clinical colleagues on the labor ward can find paths towards enhancing their individual as well as their collective well-being. Preliminary findings focus on the factors which healthcare workers report as influencing their well-being and to the impact of the study as related to the methodology. Claire was supported in the study by funding from the Royal College of Midwives, Ruth Davies Research Bursary 2018, and from fellowship funding from the Faculty of Health, Social Care and Education, Kingston University, and St. George's University of London, UK. There you have it. Welcome, Claire. Thank you very much, Red, for that. Can I just have a query about the slides? Because I can't see anything to move them on from my end. OK, I have. I can see the just... first slide, but not the. OK, let me just double check that you have the presentation. Mm, you do have the presentation Claire yeah so. I've got the present uh, well I've got one in front of me but it's not giving me the arrows let me just oh okay no I haven't got a hey, bear with us for a minute everybody. a way of moving them oh. forward Shall I just start chatting red while oh uh, yeah if you go well, ahead that's, and yeah see if that's why okay uh, hello everybody um I am a straightforward clinical midwife. I, I, I have obviously. Oh, thank you, Red. I can see the slides now. I can see the arrows. That's super. OK, perfect. OK. Um, yeah, I'm a clinical midwife. I, I'm not um, in any academic institution. Um, I just was interested in trying to enhance our well-being at work and um, it's it, it's actually sort of historic in some ways because it was a few years ago, obviously, that I became aware that, that I felt something needed to be developed to support people. But obviously, it takes a while to get a study underway. Um, so the other thing is, although it is about colleague well-being on a labour ward, a busy labour ward in a hospital, um, it's ultimately for the women because there's lots of evidence to suggest that if we are feeling good, we being doctors, receptionists, theatre personnel, if we if we feel good within ourselves, then that cascades out to our uh, care of the women and, and to their experience. So although it is about us, it's it's about the care we provide as well and the quality of that. I'd like to just say a little bit about participatory action research, actually. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know how, how much you, you all are familiar with it. But anyway, if I just say a little bit about it, normally say you were doing something about um, well-being, you might do, say, 20 interviews of different people, see what made them feel good at work, and then um, you would write it up and then hope that the impact would follow from people reading what, what you found. Um, art, participatory research, as it suggests, is more about involving everybody who might be affected by, by whatever you're doing in that research so that they are 
um, call participants with you. You're not the the research. You're initiating it, but you're you're not um, you're only supporting it. You're trying to let it happen um, in tandem with everyone who who might be impacted by it. And the insider bit is obviously that um, if it's initiated by someone from within the setting. Um, it's it's got a slightly different bottom up aspect to it. So it was known as the wellbeing project just for simplicity. As it says there, the setting was one East Midlands consultant led labour ward, and the aim of the study was to develop a caring collegial environment in which healthcare workers develop paths to enhancing their individual and collective well-being. How did we do it? I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail because it would be too much, but basically we asked people, everyone on the ward, what made them happy at work and then we put the stories for everyone to see, which I'll, I'll show you in a moment, so everyone could read their stories and then we used that information to try and um, action something about that with using that data before the end of the study. Sorry, that's the difference in action research as well, that the you don't just take the information and it's finished. You actually do something with it as you go along. So these are roughly the amount of people who were invited to take place. It was over a year and a half. So there were a lot of people going in and out of the um, environment. You can see there's a mix, there's doctors, there's theatre staff, anaesthetists, healthcare assistants, housekeepers, domestic um, colleagues and reception colleagues. Because if you're doing something participatory, then you want it, ev everything we do, all our behaviours impact on the next person that we work with. So if a healthcare assistant um, is particularly helpful or kind, then that makes you feel good. And obviously in, from the negative point of view as well. So it's, it's all about us working together. So in terms of the study activity, what did we do? What did we find? And how does that affect what we're going to do in the future? So that's what I'm going to go through. I was available in the setting for um, 900 hours roughly over an 18 month period and I was basically hanging about because I felt that healthcare workers didn't have a lot of time to give me long interviews about what made them feel good at work. So I would sit around and whenever they were free I would talk to them or they would approach me sometimes individually sometimes in groups. and. Um, if the activity was high on the ward, I provided drinks and cake and all the things that we like and answered phones, did, just did jobs to keep the place running. And then when it was quieter, there was a chance to actually continue with the study. So as I said before, we displayed the quotes widely uh, for all the occupational groups who were involved to see and we established three action groups. One was a healthcare uh, action group, one was a theatre action group and one was a coordinator action group and they developed from the data that we got about um, areas where, where people felt particularly good or felt that there could be some development. So this was one of the displays, this was the biggest wall display. As you can see, it's absolutely covered in PPE and this was an ongoing thing. It's very difficult to get a, um, a place to actually put information up in most clinical areas. But um, these things that you can see on the wall are all quotes from interviews or from questionnaires, which is the way that the data was collected. Online questionnaires, hard copy questionnaires and just interviews in passing or in formal settings. And, and because not everybody accessed this room, uh, we also had mobile boards. This is one of them. 
the, this we I often would have a board in the sort of handover room in the hub of the labor ward and would feed back all the data that was coming through. So on this one in the middle, it's saying hello to the new colleagues. There was a new group of doctors arriving that week. And um, this was basically to to um, share some of the, the information that we'd had and some of the accounts that people had given. So on the left, it was about names because people were saying that what they really liked was when people remembered their names, addressed them by the names, and it made it, it much more personal for them. Um, which might seem odd but we've got a very large team so quite often people are in and out sometimes for short periods and it's sometimes quite difficult to um, be aware of everyone's name which is unfortunate on the right hand side we've got particular clinical instances where people felt great with the teamwork their well-being was affected by thinking that or witnessing seeing um terrific responses to acute incidents and they were pleased to see that we all work well together and there was a good outcome for the woman that that made a lot of difference to them so what we found uh, about what made healthcare workers feel good um was thematically analyzed um, we did it, I started about a few months into it, maybe a year, and uh, there were six other midwives who analysed the data with me. Um, I did hope that some of the other health professionals would do it as well, but there were, there were only midwives who were comfortable doing it. And this, um, I'm afraid it, it's a bit of a fancy thing, but it, it basically has put the data that we got into themes and if we start from uh, um, the red triangle what people were saying made their uh, well-being um, enhanced was it, on the right hand side there's physical nourishment so there were a lot of comments of people saying that if they had something to eat and drink if they had a bit of a rest that made them feel good at work particularly in 12 hour or overnight shifts professional nourishment related to um, satisfaction of individual motivators which um, I meant to understand as people felt if they were good in their role if they felt that they offered something um, that how they wanted to work was fulfilled that that gave them professional nourishment and um, if using those skills that they'd accrued in their role then made a difference to team working so there maybe was an acute incident incidents where they went into theater and they could see everybody working well and that they were able to do something purposeful within that team that made them feel good but as you can see the majority of um comments came from emotional nourishment that's what really seemed to keep people going at work um i won't be able to go into it all of them because obviously it will take too much time but um so the sub themes were basically joy in work people enjoyed being at work they loved their colleagues there was a lot of that um appreciative communication so that was positive feedback and gratitude so People, um, colleagues loved giving positive feedback to other people and they loved receiving it. So it, it was great if somebody said, gosh, you were marvellous today, you know, well done you. Um, and also gratitude, people saying thank you and sometimes going out of the way to say thank you, following them up maybe on Facebook or something and finding them and saying you made a difference to my day. And that was very much appreciated, that sort of back and forward of, of gratitude and feedback. Welcoming behaviours again, that what was particularly if people were new, somebody remembered their name, said hello to them in the corridor, smiled at them, it made a terrific difference to them. And you forget when you're in an environment uh, that you're used to how intimidating it can be for new people. Positive environment, 
was just basically that feeling that the ward was open to people, it would welcome people it didn't recognise. And the colleagues caring was, was really the biggest theme that people uh, love to help each other out right? and they loved to get that support when they needed it and um, they really appreciated seeing seniors role modelling so they set the tone of the ward and how we work, how we behave and they, they love to see people helping each other out. Uh, belonging was was a thing that I think I'm probably going to develop more. These are these are preliminary findings, uh, but these bring together the um, what basically makes people go to work and be happy at work. So in terms of making the future better, um, one of the strategies, as I said, what, um, was starting some action groups. And I'll just give you a little bit of detail about one, which was is about the healthcare assistant action group. And um, I'll explain why we, we started this group. So on the left, I'm sorry, there's quite a lot on this slide, but on the left, um, were the elements that affected healthcare assistant well-being and things that they wanted to develop. So the first one on the, the left top is it was a desire to expand activities within their role. And as Andrea here is saying, it's not that we want to do a midwife's job, it's that we want to help them. We know our responsibilities, but they wanted to do more. They felt able to do more and they wanted their role developed. The next one down was about Actually, I might just stay on that one. I'll stay on the activities one. So on the right side, through dialogue between different healthcare assistants and other colleagues that they worked with, we did we um, had a number of uh, um, meetings in the action group and eventually their role developed such that they were going in and supporting more births, they were going into theatre more and they were being involved in more admission activity which hasn't been the case on our labour ward as a rule. Um, and Karen here is saying a few months ago one of the healthcare assistants was down in the dumps, now she's doing all sorts, it's helped her frame of mind, so it, it encouraged that person's enthusiasm and the midwives also responded to the project and were inviting people to share their experiences. Um, and also the healthcare assistants took on a lot more patient or woman related initiatives and more initiatives to support staff so that they um, did things like put, like put um, new furniture and um, fabrics and fridges and things in the um, staff in the staff setting room and put more pictures in the the women's waiting area just to make the place nicer so in the next one down is competence in theater documentation they like to go into theater but as sarah here says they used to dread it um, because they they didn't always they weren't always familiar with the vocabulary and they were expected to document it. So we developed together in the group a scribing framework, um, which basically had all the things that you might want to document in theatre, like what time certain personnel arrived, what time this uh, surgery started, what time the baby was born, etc. And then all they had to do was was find that on the list and put the name and the time and the date. So that was just facilitating. And also they then became used to the vocabulary and were more fluent in it. The next one down was team working. They wanted to do more team working. And just over the period of time of them letting people know what um, what they were looking for towards their well-being and work, um, just cascading that information out um, made us all a bit more proactive um, and Becky's saying here the morale of the ward improved, improved teamwork, people were talking more and helping each other and Pat at the bottom is saying that the gratitude um, became more prevalent such that when she 
did an initiative for soft lighting in the bathroom for the women um she she was thanked for that and she really appreciated being thanked and somebody noticing what she'd done and thinking it was good so that's just a, a brief summary of what happened in one group um another group was the theater group as i said and one of the initiatives from that was to have some theater hats that is me sorry i didn't get permission for anyone else's uh, photograph sadly so that's me and my hat and um the idea of that was that if you're in a busy theater and um you maybe don't know the colleagues from theater very well because they rotate the midwives rotate into theater and the woman will go into a sea of people and the partner who she's not familiar with so it was just for everybody really to recognize each other and feel comfortable with with each other so uh, we then had an evaluation towards the end of the study towards the end of the 18 months and i've got five different points um which are the, the main points from 62 interviews and 96 questionnaires over that period of time. So one of the main things was the atmosphere of the ward changed. It was never a miserable place, um, but uh, there was an element of increased positivity. People felt more optimistic, the morale and the culture, uh, was enhanced. This is what what people uh, were reporting. They felt there was a, a happier vibe about the place. And also um, colleagues showed increased caring behaviours. They did always look after each other, but um, there was more an awareness that maybe there would be a newcomer in a room and it would be great to anticipate that they might be struggling before uh, um, coming out to ask for some support and that maybe just knocking on the door, you know, can I do anything useful, would, would, would stop them getting anxious. So there was a lot of feedback of people uh, showing more caring behaviours and also uh, to, to, towards the woman thinking of, of ways that we might improve her experience. The other main things that came out of it was there was improved um, interdisciplinary teamworking. Karen here said there was more teamwork. Nobody said this is how we want to work now. It's just people started talking about what they, they'd seen on the displays, you know, the currency of the conversation and um, started to act differently. And again, here, people anticipated that they, they sort of felt that, yeah, I get it, that the um, if we feel better, then that is going to have an, an impact on the women and we, we will behave in a, in a different way. And as Catherine here has said, it, it's not considered a fluffy thing to think about someone's well-being. It's got a direct impact on people. Um, and also, um, it was a bit of a byproduct, but it came out strongly in the evaluation and, and, and also informally all the time. People would say, oh, it's great having you here. Just, the, just my being present, people perceived me as uh, free so that they would come along, nothing to do with the study, just talk about something that was bothering them. And... Um, really appreciated someone who was available rather than feeling they were maybe interrupting a clinical colleague who who might be busy so um and they loved getting cake and tea and don't we all so um they were the the sort of main points but as i say i'm still doing the analysis and, and putting it all together so just thinking about why some of those outcomes might have occurred um, one on, on an anonymous questionnaire, someone said, maybe thinking about how we feel encourages self-reflection and makes us behave differently towards our colleagues. Um, you know, through the data, understanding where people are coming from, seeing that simple things can make a difference, that people just gradually started to adopt behaviours. 
And Kate, one of the senior midwives, um, became aware that her uh, behaviour towards new starters made a big difference to them. A lot of new starters said, gosh, it's great when these senior people say hello to me and how are you doing? And um, Kate has recognised that her behaviour changed in response to that. This was just a slide to sort of summarise what we did, the, the sort of which could be applied anywhere and it's not new as such, it's, uh, it's part of action, action research, but um, it's just about what makes us feel good at work was fundamentally about ident identifying what made us feel good and then magnifying that, so building on it. A lot of action research is problem solving. And um, from the literatures that I um, accessed prior to starting, I um, sometimes when the problem solving was identified, there would literally be hundreds of problems that colleagues identified um, within an area. And I felt that when people's well-being was already impacted um, negatively, that maybe underlining all the other things that were wrong, um, maybe wouldn't um increase their well-being so that's why we came at it from a positive psychology point of view and building on what was good so just going around um starting with the yellow uh start here and the smiley we identified what made us all feel good included everybody and a lot of comments were from um doctors receptionists all across the board and things like gratitude and feedback Consultants appreciated that every bit as much as everyone else, and it made us aware that they are they too are human beings and and need to need that to nurture them just the same as everyone else. Um, so we displayed the stories, we kept including everybody, we identified colleagues who were enthusiastic to make a difference, and started the action groups, and then got together to to work out what we would do we fed back what we were doing and people fed into that and then just kept going kept going kept going and um it's still going there's lots of different initiatives have come from it this was a model that we saw to develop which took the things that i said earlier about professional and um emotional and uh, physical nourishment together so we kind of um, I'm developing this and I think I need a lot more activity between the different groups but basically you've got an individual in the middle who is happy with the work happy with what they contribute to the team but for that to be joyful for that to be purposeful they need an environment which is compassionate towards them so all of the things that we've mentioned earlier about welcoming people giving them something to eat and drink having a good vibe um giving feedback and gratitude looking after each other all of those things um sorry i'm just looking at the time all of those things we brought together to eventually give you a sense of belonging um and willingness to to go into the to the working environment so how did participants get on with participatory research i'll just give you a minute to read this slide So um, it seemed to be well received. People um, didn't find it difficult to access um, the study. So in conclusion, um, this, we, we felt that healthcare worker wellbeing was fueled by emotional, professional, physical nourishment, but emotional nourishment was, was um, dominant really. And we felt that the increased awareness of the impact of our behaviours 
on our colleagues and encourage more positive behaviours. So it's a sort of upward spiral. And we use the action groups to take the data forward and to do positive things with practical outcomes. And as an, another thing was that we were surprised as to how much um, someone being extra in the environment made to, to people's feeling about that day. So what we can do in the future, focus on meeting basic human needs in the workplace, and that would be any workplace. It's all, we're all human beings in whatever workplace we're in. Um, ask the question as to what makes people feel happy at work and do more of it. And provide protected time for small groups of people to get together and work out what would be good to um, accelerate or extend in their area. And then maybe think about having volunteer roles for colleagues. We've got um, volunteer roles for women or for patients more widely in the trust. But maybe think about somebody just hanging about, looking after um, each other, really. I think, um, yeah, that's my last slide. And that is, um, that's my contact. I be, would be delighted if anyone wants to get in touch. So, so that's me. Are you there, Red? Nope, she's not. Well, um, I don't know whether anyone's got anything that they would like uh, to say in response or if there's any questions at all. Let me just see what's on the comments. You're not alone, Claire. Uh, Linda, oh, hello. You... Hello, Linda. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Red's disappeared. I, yeah, I see that. That's fine. I'll I'll just um <clears throat> okay in until she gets her her sound back. My voice is a bit like yours because it's so early in the morning for us. Yeah. Um, but anyway, there were a few comments made. Um, well, more comments than questions, really. Have you, have you read yourself. One is about the importance. How important it is to have a respectful sense of belonging, which I think you brought out nicely. Oh, I'm back. Oh, hello. Right, I'll leave you to it then, Red. Sorry. Sorry about that. That's because I was logged into um, another room, so it took over my sound. But uh, wow, Claire, I loved that presentation. Thank you so much for all of the time and effort that you've put into an area that is so often so overlooked and so, so important. It, it really makes me feel like um, you've kind of created a new profession. <laughs> in being the carer for the cares on the ward. And I like how you added in about, um, you know, maybe going forward, there is a, this is a volunteer position, but I would like to say, you know, this could even be a paid position because the, mm -hmm. the more kind of, I mean, the results that you have are just outstanding. So it's obviously such an important thing for all of us. Yeah, well, um, it, it actually started because I, I was a participant in a birth project um, about trauma around birth and they invited doulas and women and midwives, anyone who was involved in, in birth um, to talk about their experiences and find out how it impacted on, on our well-being. And one of the facilitators was a psychologist who said that when, when she speaks with with her clients that she has a debrief, which I think someone's written something about, but I haven't quite read it yet. Mm. Um, that, you, you know, when once they've had a session, they get debriefed with a supervisor, I think every month, uh, just listening to things that have been traumatic to their client. And I thought, well, that's interesting because we're seeing things every day that are obviously joyful, but we're also seeing very, um emotionally draining things and we really don't quite get that depth of of support for each other you're expected to just take a deep breath and and get into the next situation really so i felt i really wanted to acknowledge us as as human beings mm, yeah this and that goes right along with what andrea was commenting she said it would be great if we could always have someone available 
who we could debrief with after an incident yeah or yeah. yeah yeah no absolutely right i mean it's done informally and sometimes formally but and also what's what's draining or or emotional to one person isn't the next so it's feeling that you've got somebody mm -hmm. who won't say well you know that's an everyday thing you'll get used yeah. to that um you know the sort of apprehensiveness about newcomers just being able to support them would be good yeah and it's so true in our work as midwives i mean our ability to be able to debrief and release our own trauma so that we can walk into the next room as a as a clean yeah. slate and not carry our fear in with us it, it dramatically affects um our results with women for sure i see that in my own practice all the time right so um, coming to the questions, um, there was a few comments during your um, presentation. There was a lot of, there was some, people were excited about your theater hats. That was such a brilliant idea that really makes it so easy for, um, to feel that sort of teamwork. And I can imagine it also for the women who are coming in. Absolutely. Theater, it was so nice to be, oh, there's Claire, she's a midwife, there's so-and-so. Yeah. I would love to see this rolled out, it's brilliant. Yeah. Well, th that was yeah. actually self-funded in the end. Um, and there were um, over 50 people paid, paid for their own. And, um, it's such a shame because COVID came along and then obviously we couldn't have the cloth hats, mm -hmm. uh, but but that'll be reintroduced. But yeah, and, and also from a, from a point of view of safety, because it's hard to quickly get the anaesthetist's eye or, or ear mm -hmm. if you don't actually know yes. which one is the anaesthetist. Yeah, that's right. Um, so just doing a, a time check as well for us, we have six minutes, so keep the questions coming for Claire. Um, Liz was commenting, cannot overemphasize the importance of respectful sense of belonging. Um, Linda, I loved my working day both as a midwife and as an educator and missed all of those colleagues. But the labor ward can be a terrible place for greeting, moaning. So I agree that taking a positive slant is far more likely to encourage positive thoughts than looking at the negatives. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I've just seen Jesse here. Is uh, Jesse? Mm -hmm. Hello. Sorry, um, I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear. Yes, I, I am an insider uh, person. I've worked on that unit for most of my work in life, really. So I, I was very familiar to people, um, and I think that's probably one of the um, influences of it that um i was not coming in from outside and, and was a strange person and needed a while to get into it into the situation for people to trust what i was doing um people took a little while to cotton on to exactly what it is you're doing but um beyond that i i was not perceived as a threat i i wasn't building my career around it it was not about um, the research primarily, it was primarily about making a difference in the, the setting and, and then hopefully making differences in, in other settings. But it, it, it was, um, it, I think it was quite a strong part of it that I was very familiar with, with how the place worked and therefore could adjust um, on a day-to-day -day basis the, the sort of attitudes and what was happening and when I should should just stay quiet and when I could be more, more, um, um, well, you know, I don't know what to say, make, make my presence felt more. Hmm. Yeah, it's wonderful that you had that really in-house um, approach. It really shows in the quality also of um, the research that you were able to, to do with having that relationship of trust on the ground. So uh, Jesse then says, really interesting. We talk so much about how difficult it can be to influence workplace culture, and this methodology clearly works. 